You know, the story behind, uh, in this case, the Les Paul, and the first year of Les Paul, 1952, all the way up to, let's say, 1958, 59, which is the iconic Holy Grail years, is to see the innovation that occurred 60-some years ago. One of the amazing aspects of having a consecutive collection of gold tops is that you can grab each one and play it and, and literally feel and see how the instrument changed from year to year and, and evolved to become really what is the, the one of the most popular guitars of the history of guitars, period. And this collection actually summarizes that and it actually shares that evolution of this guitar and how it evolved right before your very eyes. of the Les Paul is you're bringing together Gibson, a manufacturer that had been around for you know, dozens of years, decades, combined with a very popular player at the time, um, Les Paul. And those two elements bring together a, a unique kind of innovation that really didn't exist prior to that. Um, when, when asked what color he thought the, the, you know, uh, the Les Paul model should be, he said gold because it's, it's fancy, it's a uh, luxurious color and it's supposed to be, he wanted it to be a, a, a luxurious instrument. The two main um, you know, solid body Les Paul guitars, Les Paul models that Gibson had at the time were the, uh, the gold top, right? Um, and the custom, the black, you know, Alnico and P90 custom, and that certainly had its own evolution. Um, so it, it, there were several evolutions that were parallel to this one, but this one in particular is just so important because it paved the way to the first dual humbucker ABR1 um, Les Paul with enough of a neck angle that you had a very, very useful action, which is the 57. Fifty-seven, which is the the next year, right, um, was the first two humbucker, two PAF uh, Les Paul with uh, with an ABR one with with a tunematic um, uh, bridge. So that's why this evolution is so important. It led to that guitar, which is you know kind of the uh, out of out of the gold tops. It is definitely one of the most sought after ones and the most expensive one. 52 is a huge year, obviously, because it's the first year for the Les Paul, and uh, they were experimenting, you know, and, and trying to figure it out still. And um, one of the things they tried was making the whole thing gold. It's not something that they stuck with, um, so there's very few floating around that are all, all gold, you know, front and back, you know, sides, all gold. And this is one of them. It's pretty, uh, a pretty early one, too, so it's pretty amazing that we have it. Some of the cool things about this particular collection is there's two unique aspects of, of some of these guitars. One is we have a 52 Gibson Les Paul and a 53 Gibson Les Paul. And by 53, a most Les Pauls would have a stop tail. So but this is a 53 that still has a trapeze. So that made it a, interesting is that we thought we had two 52s when we were inspecting them, but then when we further inspected the year, we found that one was a 53. It was just an early 53. It was early in 1953, and they were still using the trapeze. Les Paul also did mention that the, the original design for the trapeze tailpiece was not going to work, that the strings needed to wrap over, not under, um, and, uh, and, that's, and he was actually very much not, uh, not into the first year Les Paul, and he wanted that changed. And then when we went to the 55, the 1955 Les Paul, we saw that it had a tunematic. And interestingly enough, they really went to the tunematic predominantly in 56, although in late 55, 
can start to see the tunematic on certain certain models. The 54 is a really special guitar. It is extremely clean, also clearly played. So it's one of those guitars that was lucky because it was something that wasn't just left in the case. It was something that somebody played but took a, just very good care of. It still has a, a lot of fret life left, which is, these frets were pretty small from the factory to begin with. So uh, to have something that's that clean that has that much fret life and feels as good as it does, I mean, it's, it's pretty rare. The P90s and, and the way it works with that uh, wraparound, you know, stop tailpiece, it's unstoppable. Gold tops tend to green with age because in the paint, there are actual chips uh, or, or, or particles of bronze which eventually do turn green. In general, on, on all of the, the, the whole 56, you can see some, some greening throughout. And that, that greening is definitely something you can see in the, uh, the armware area of the 55. The, the 55 was clearly played heavily um, and, who knows, toured. I mean, it, it definitely is something that was somebody's uh, potentially like main guitar. Uh, it's not unusual for a very worn instrument to feel great because you know, it, ob it obviously feels great because somebody's played it a lot. These guitars are really well maintained and they, and, and they have their, their quality collectible guitars in terms of uh, their integrity and in terms of originality. And it's nice when you have guitars that are play well and have collectible features. These are all really well played guitars, great necks, good output on the pickups, um, just overall you know, well-constructed guitars. And the 56 is the lightest Les Paul I've ever picked up. It is an extremely light, lightweight guitar, which is pretty unusual for these. And, uh, beautifully resonant, I mean, it plays amazing, the P90 sound incredible. All of those P90s sound amazing, actually. But, uh, but that guitar is so light and so resonant, it's gonna make somebody very happy. So here we got the beginning of the transition. Um, the trapeze, we sort of bled into 1953, and then we got sort of the early stage of the tunematic by getting a late 55. And that's another interesting aspect to this collection is, is that they weren't, January 1, let's start with the new production. That's not how innovation and evolution happens. It, it happens um, by customer feedback and manufacturers and Les Paul and everyone sort of coming together and it's like, all right, this model's now changed. And, uh, and, and, and this is a really good example of that uh, right before our very eyes.